All right, so Leap Motion is taking a step to make its hand tracking technology a bit more intuitive for users. And joining us to talk about this, and oddly enough, another hands in technology story is Addie Robertson from The Verge. It's great to have you here. Thanks so much for uh, joining us tonight. So we got two hands in technology stories. So let's start with one here. First up, you wrote about Leap Motion's announcement of the interaction uh, engine today. What what shortfalls does this address with Leap Motion technology right now? Um, so on a really broad level, what this is meant to address is that the physics engines in video games right now are not meant for you actually putting your hands in a game and trying to interact with them. They're sort of meant to detect collisions and make sure that things don't collide. But that means that if you're trying to grab something that it might bounce away from you, if you try to run your hands through it or throw it, that it's not going to behave the way that you would actually expect an object you were picking up to behave. How disconcerting uh, has this been as a Leap Motion user prior? Because I understand you haven't actually played around with the, this improved um, tracking kind of update. I think this was just kind of teased more than anything today for developers. But uh, what was it like prior to this in, in your experience? Um, so Leap Motion's been using what I understand is sort of a prototype of it in their previous demos. So I've tried a little bit of that, and I've tried it beforehand. <laughs> It's really, it's that a lot of the time Leap Motion will work per perfectly well, but then there's that one time in, you know, maybe 10 where you try to grab something and it just kind of slips out like soap, um, or you try to stack one block on top of another and they really hate being together and so they freak out and fly all over the place, um, which is bad because it's like if you have a mouse and that mouse didn't register one out of every so often clicks, interactivity systems really have to absolutely be stable for them to not be incredibly annoying. Yeah, and some sort of connection. I mean, I imagine, you know, when you're in the virtual environment and things just aren't working, I mean, that totally removes you from the immersion of the experience. Um, speaking of kind of the broader kind of VR sense and how Leap Motion sits in that world, what are, what are their ambitions with this technology? I realize this was just kind of like teasing this update and that it's coming soon, but are, is, is Leap Motion um, hoping to be built into some of the kind of more modern uh, VR headsets or will it always be kind of like a standalone add-on. Right, so a while ago they announced that they were trying to get built into headsets. Right now they're not in the big consumer headsets like the Oculus Rift or the HTC Vive, um, but if you know what the Void headsets are, the uh, yeah. Rapture gear, they are in that, which lets you use your hands to sort of grab things in a temple. Um, and they're said, they've said that they're working with other manufacturers. We don't know exactly what they're going to be in, but they definitely have ambitions to just be part of VR headsets and not a standalone or a headset mounted device. Yeah, they've certainly been doing it for a while when they kind of introduced this in the laptops. I, I can't remember exactly when it was, like four years ago, you know, before VR was even a thing that we were talking about on a regular basis. Um, are there any other usability issues that you've experienced um, with Leap Motion that could be addressed uh, in the future? So the big thing that they will themselves say about this update is that it's for very simple shapes. And that's a lot of what I've used Leap Motion with. Mm -hmm. That for right now, you can pick things up in this sort of controlled environment, but if they actually put you in what was a realistic VR environment with a bunch of different objects of different shapes and sizes, it wouldn't necessarily work that well. Um, I don't know how well it would work because I haven't tried it, but it's something they're clearly still working on. So I think that's one of the next big steps. Who knows? Maybe they'll build an exoskeleton. Uh, Leap Motion is obviously attacking hand control without any additional hardware for the user to wear. But um, you also wrote today about Dexmo by Dextra Robotics. Tell us a bit about this exoskeleton for VR. Um, so this is an exoskeleton that the company has been working on for several years now. And the idea is that it provides literal force feedback. So you put this thing onto your hand and when you grab something, it will tell, okay, there should be X much pressure and it should kind of push back against you and make you feel like you're actually grabbing something. Um, so there are some situations where you'll have haptic gloves and they'll vibrate or they'll heat up or they'll do something that simulates a texture. In this case, it's much more about grabbing the actual physical object and simulating that feeling of having something solid in your hand. Um, I haven't tried it. I think it's kind of exciting and also a little bit scary looking. <laughs> 
Is the, so I'm looking at the prototype right now. Is the resistance applied from the top, from those top levers? So in other words, you're, you go in the virtual environment to reach for a doorknob. And when your hand grabs the doorknob, those top levers will kind of keep your fingers from moving further forward. Is that how this works? That's how I understand that it works. Yeah. Again, it's one of those things where I feel like I have to try it to really understand how well it works, yeah. especially to understand how much pressure you actually feel from this. Uh, but it's an intriguing idea. It really is. It seems like the next step, although at the same time, kind of seems pretty burdensome for uh, at least <laughs> like for the average user um, to throw these massive, you know, robotic gloves on their hands. I think it's pretty cool. Um, do you think, I mean, is tactile force like this? Is this kind of the next, like one of the next kind of frontiers of VR taking it from this immersive visual and aural experience and, and uh, bringing the sense of touch into it? Haptics in general are absolutely a really fascinating part of VR that people are just starting to work on. In this case, they're obviously thinking about consumers, but they're thinking more about like surgeons or say people working in the auto industry and trying to design things uh, or anything that's big enough that you're not just kind of strapping this on to play games that maybe a company buys it and you're using it in an industrial capacity, which is a really good uh, short term plan for them. Sure. Is there any existing haptic feedback gloves right now in, in VR that's out for consumers? Um, so there are a lot of different haptic systems. Um, I can't remember the names of all of them, but there is one that heats up uh, and vibrates. There are a bunch of vibrating vests. Um, there are some very advanced systems that I think are mostly in labs that can supposedly simulate really specific textures. Um, like whether something's smooth or rough, um, and that's much more on a, a kind of fine motion level. So you have a billion different ways that people are approaching haptics. None of the ones that I've ever tried have worked particularly well. They're much more interesting proofs of concept than they are products. Um, but again, it's just the start. Tesla suit by Tesla Studios is one. It's the full body haptic suit uh, with all <laughs> yes, of these I different points and everything to... Yeah, simulate. Sounds interesting. Yeah, uh, the oh, big sorry. problem is that they just, uh, it's so hard to find a good fit for all these things. Oh, I have to imagine. Yeah, it's, it's so specialized. Kind of piece of how, how do you fit this on on the wide kind of gamut of, of different shapes and sizes of people? Um, and, you know, as well, having all that technology tightly packed in and everything, I have to imagine that's a huge challenge for, for a bodysuit, especially. Mm -hmm. It's not like Ready uh, Player One yet. Not yet. <laughs> yeah. We're getting there. Uh, Addie Robertson from The Verge, thank you so much for coming on and, and talking with us about a few of these kind of advancements that we're seeing here. Tell people where they can follow all of your work online. Uh, so I'm at theverge.com, and I am also at the Dextriarchy on Twitter. You can see it uh, right below my face. It's uh, hard to spell. Yeah, there we go. The Dextriarchy uh, on Twitter. Thank you so much, Addie. We'll Thanks, talk to Addie. you soon.